We're here to idea everyone, to fire up your curiosity and connect you with the people and ideas that shape our world. Watch, listen, understand, connect, create. Let's move the human story forward together. Hello and welcome to The Poetry of Science, a podcast which provides insight into new scientific research via the medium of poetry. I'm your croaky host, Dr. Sam Illingworth, and each week I'll be introducing you to some of the latest scientific findings and sharing a selection of science-themed poetry. After all, we could all do with a little bit more poetry in our lives. In this episode, I'll be exploring new research, which has found that current measures to protect grasslands in the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau are damaging the ecosystem and should be stopped. In the land of clouds, the roof of the world begins to creak, its glistening canvas stretched thin beneath this heaven's vault. Mirrored lakes shimmer like sapphires, Caught beneath an ocean of grasslands whose waves of jade run red With the consequential strength of our empty, false convictions Rodents fall like lambs, their lifeless forms flooding vibrant fields With questions that refuse to disappear Our oppressive interventions now made plain for all to see This poem is inspired by recent research published in the Journal of Animal Ecology, which has found that present strategies safeguarding the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau's grasslands are inadvertently harming its ecosystem and need to be reconsidered. The Qinghai Tibetan Plateau in Central Asia has implemented a policy over the past four decades to eradicate burrowing mammals such as rodents. This policy was conceived under the assumption that these animals compete with livestock for food and cause grassland degradation. These assumptions, however, lack concrete theoretical or experimental evidence to back them up. Unravelling the mystery of these burrowing creatures, their role in keeping our grasslands thriving, and the potential fallout of their disappearance, creates an ecological puzzle. Could their eradication unexpectedly tip the scales, disrupting sustainable livestock grazing, and turning vibrant grasslands such as the Qinghai Tibetan Plateau into barren grounds? This new research challenges the existing eradication policy and uncovers counterintuitive findings. The studies reveal that these previous eradication attempts have actually led to a boom in the burrowing mammal population due to more food availability and fewer predators. Moreover, the study found that these mammals and livestock don't share the same diet. Hence, eliminating these creatures promotes growth of plants they prefer, not the ones livestock do. The study proposes a different approach. Instead of wiping out burrowing mammals, control their numbers using nature-friendly strategies. For instance, creating habitats for their natural predators and reducing overgrazing can encourage the growth of taller grass, which these mammals dislike. This way, we can keep grasslands healthy, sustain livestock grazing, and minimise human wildlife conflicts. Now that you've heard the science, let me read the poem to you again. In the land of clouds, the roof of the world begins to creak. Its glistening canvas stretched thin beneath this heaven's vault. Mirrored lakes shimmer like sapphires, caught beneath an ocean of grasslands whose waves of jade run red with the consequential strength of our empty, false convictions. Rodents fall like lambs, their lifeless forms flooding vibrant fields with questions that refuse to disappear. Our oppressive interventions now made plain for all to see. In this section of the podcast, I'd like to share a poem written by another poet on a topic related to the science that has been discussed so far. In this episode, I'll be reading On the Plains, by David Vagona. David Vagona was an American poet and novelist who was born in 1926, renowned for his insightful works inspired by the natural world. 
A key figure in the Northwest School of Poetry, his evocative pieces beautifully encapsulate the landscape and spirit of the Pacific Northwest. He authored over 30 books, including Travelling Light and Who Shall Be the Sun. He served as the editor for Poetry Northwest and taught at the University of Washington for decades, influencing numerous aspiring writers. His commendable career has earned him multiple accolades, including the Ruth Lilly Poetry Prize and two nominations for the Pulitzer Prize. On the Plains by David Fagona There was nothing to keep you here and there was nothing to keep you from returning, so now you stand in this plain country where a river stone seems lost, a tree impractical where walking measures your time and space as plodding equals, where even a change of weather has no point of ambush, no hiding place but the horizon. You see what there is to see as far away as a buzzard in this land of hope deferred. Whatever is going to happen, relief or ruin, rescue or massacre is obvious. So long ahead of time you can relax, and meanwhile make yourself uncomfortable, acquiring a taste for painless disappointment. To live here is to take the middle of nowhere, to heart against plain speech and desolation and growing means to keep the eternal now coldly in mind, a potato in a cellar, eyes clenched to hold the past and future tight, and dying is no harder than bursting sod or breaking new ground on the flats of righteousness. While barbed wire cuts the grinds of the neighbourhood into lots, boneyards and pens, while the walls of houses measure you foursquare, while shaded windows and roofs keep out the mad lights in the sky, the medicine of choice are dancing and shouting, stomping your boot soles on the floor and saving the jam-packed firmament from election to hell. If you go away again, not breaking the laws of diminishing returns or false perspective or parsimony, Nothing will interfere, except the sun and snow and rain and a god who takes the shape of the prevailing wind, a mass as heavy as the fear of the known, which though you cringe aside, still moves against you. Thank you for listening to the Poetry of Science. Thank you very much for being with us for this episode of the Idea Me Show. Idea Me is a global platform. Our mission is to move the human story forward by sharing knowledge of the future. You can find us on all major audio networks at www.radioideame.com, on YouTube and Vimeo. Please subscribe.